Book 15 of the Odyssey, Athena summons Telemachus from Sparta. He meets with Theoclemenes at Pylos and brings him to Ithaca. On landing, he goes to the hut of Eumaeus. But Athena went to the fair city of Sparta to tell Odysseus's son that he was to return at once. She found him in Pisaratus, sleeping in the forefort of Menelaus's house. Pisaratus was flat ass asleep, but Telemachus could eat no rest all night for thinking of his unhappy father. So Athena went close up to him and said, Telemachus, you should not remain so far away from home any longer, nor leave your property with such dangerous people in your house. They will eat up everything you have among them, and you will have been on a fool's errand. Ask Menelaus to send you home at once. If you wish to find your excellent mother still there, when you get back, her father and brothers are already urging her to marry Eurymachus who has given her more than any of the others and has been greatly increasing his wedding presence. I hope nothing valuable may have been taken from the house in spite of you, but you know what women are. They always want to do the best they can for the man who marries them and never give another thought to the children of their first husband, nor to their father either, when he is dead and done with. Go home, therefore, and put everything in charge of the most respectful woman servants that you have, until it shall please heaven to send you a wife of your own. Let me tell you also of another matter which you had better attend to. The chief men among the suitors are lying in wait for you in the strait between Ithaca and Zane, and they mean to kill you before you can reach home. I do not much think they will succeed. It is more likely that some of those who are now eating up your property will find a grave themselves. Say on night and day, and keep your ship well away from the islands. The god who watches over you and protects you will send you a fair wind. As soon as you get to Ithaca, send your ship and men on to the town, let yourself go straight to the swineherd who has charge of your pigs. He is well disposed towards you. Stay with him, therefore, for the night, and then send him to Penelope to tell her that you have got back safe from Pylos. Then she went back to Olympus. But Telemachus stirred Stratus with his heel to rouse him and said, Wake up, Stratus, and yoke the horses to the chariot, for we must set off home. But Stratus said, No matter what hurry we are in, we cannot drive in the dark. It will be morning soon. Wait till Menelaus has brought his presents and put them in the chariot for us, and let him say goodbye to us in the usual way. So long as he lives, a guest should never forget a host who has shown him kindness. As he spoke, they began to break, and Menelaus, who had already risen, leaving Helen in bed, came towards them. When Telemachus saw him, he put on his shirt and as fast as he could, threw a great cloak over his shoulders and went over to meet him. Menelaus said he, Let me go back now to my own country, for I want to get home. And Menelaus answered Telemachus, If you insist on going, I will not detain you. I do not like to see a host either too fond of his guests or too rude to him. Moderation is best in all things, and not letting a man go when he wants to do so is as bad as telling him to go if he would like to stay. One should treat a guest well as long as he is in the house and speak them when he can, wants to leave it. Wait, then, till I can get more beautiful presents into your charities, until you have yourself seen them. I will tell the one to bear sufficient dinner for you, but what there may be in the house, it will be at once more proper and cheaper for you to get your dinner before setting out on such a long journey. If, moreover, you have a fancy for, will conduct it with you myself through all my principal cities. Now one will send us away empty handed. Everyone will give us something a bronze tripod, a couple of mules, or a gold cup. Menelaus replied to Telemachus, I want to go home at once, or when I came away, I left my property without protection, and feared that while looking for my father, I shall come to ruin myself or find that something valuable has been stolen during my absence. When Menelaus heard this, he immediately told his wife and servants to prepare sufficient dinner from what there might be in the house at this moment. Eponius joined him, for he lived close by and had just got up. So Menelaus told him to light the fire and took some meat, which he at once did. Then Menelaus went down to his favorite storeroom, not alone, and Helen went too with Megapenthes. When he reached the place where the treasure of his house were kept, he selected a double cup and told his son Megapenthes to bring also a silver mixing bowl. Meanwhile, Helen went to the chest where she kept the lovely dresses which she had made with her own hands, and took out one that was largest and most beautifully enriched with embroidery. It glittered like a star and laid the very bottom of the chest. Then they all came back from the house again till they got to Telemachus, and Menelaus said, Telemachus, may Zeus, the mighty husband of Hera, bring you safely home according to your desire. I will now present you with the finest and most precious piece of plate in all my house. It is a mixing bowl of pure silver, except for the rim, which is inlaid upon gold. It is the work of Hephaestus, Phaedomius, king of Sidonians, making a present of it in the course of a visit that I paid him while I was on my return home. I should like to give it to you. With these words, he placed the devil heaven in the hands of Telemachus and Nero brought to the beautiful mixing bowl and sent it before him. Hard by stood lovely Helen with a robe ready in her hand. I, too, my son, said she have something for you as a keepsake from the hand of Helen. It is your bride to wear upon her wedding day till then you get your mother to keep it for you. Thus may you go back rejoicing to your own country and to your home. So saying, she gave the robe over to him and received it gladly. Then Pistratus put the presents into the chariot and neither of them all has he did so. Presently, Hamel lost to Telemachus and Pistratus into the house and they both of them sat down to table. A maid servant brought them water and a beautiful bowl and ewer and poured it into a silver basin for them to wash their hands and take the room table beside them. And other servants brought them bread and offered them many good things of what there was in the house. He only carved the meat and gave them each of their portions. While well, Megapenthes poured out the wine, they laid their hands upon the good things that were before them, and as soon as they had enough to eat and drink, Telemachus and Pistratus yoked the horses and took their places in the chariots. They drove out of their the inner gateway, near the echoing gatehouse of the outer court, and Menelaus came after them with a golden goblet of wine in his right hand, and they might make a drink offering before they set out. He stood in front of the horses and pressed them, saying farewell to both of you. See that you tell Nestor how I have treated you, for he has a kind to me as any father could be, while we Hyrgians were fighting before Troy. We will be sure, sir, answered Telemachus, to tell him everything as soon as we meet him. I wish I were as certain of finding Odysseus returned when I get back to Ithaca, that I might tell him of the very great kindness you have shown me, the many beautiful presents I am taking with me, as he was thus speaking of earthly on his right hand, an eagle, a great white goose in its talons, which it had carried off from the farmland. And all the men and women were running after it and shouting. It came quite close up to them and flew on the right hands in front of the horses when they saw it. They were glad, and their hearts took comfort within them, whereon Pistratus said, Tell me, Menelaus, has heaven sent this open for us or for you? Menelaus was thinking what would be the most proper answer for him to make, but Helen was too quick for him and said, I will read this matter as heaven has put it in my heart, and as I doubt not that it will come to pass, the eagle came from the mountain where it was red and has its nest, and in like manner, Odysseus, having half traveled far and suffered much, will return to take his revenge. If indeed he is not back, back already, and hatching mischief for the suitors, may Zeus so grant it to lie Telemachus. If it should prove to be so, I will make vows to you as though you were a god, even when I am at home. As he spoke, he lashed his horses, and they started off at full speed through the town towards the